Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology, and we are with Ans. We are continuing with the conjunction of Saturn with all the planets, and Rahu and Ketu are remaining. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So there's a huge difference between Saturn conjunct Ketu and Saturn conjunct Rahu, like complete different. There's a lot of similarities with Rahu and K2, but those limit similarities all end when it comes to a Saturn conjunction. That's when they do a completely different thing. So K2 is a place where we get stuck in life. And I can't spend too much time talking about that because that's hours worth of talking. It's very intricate and involved because K2 just affects us on such a deep, deep level. But K2 makes us get stuck in a pattern of living that ends up being unfulfilling. And in life, to grow, we have to break out of that pattern and we have to go into the Rahu house and the Rahu experiences to get an experience that helps us understand ourselves and understands our lives from a different perspective. So we get stuck at K2. And we need help getting unstuck. The more factors that help us have the ability to free ourselves from the limitations of K2, the better. One of the biggest things that helps us do that is K2 with Saturn, believe it or not, okay? You'll notice a lot of spiritual masters have a Saturn-K2 conjunction, or if not, the closest planet to their K2 is Saturn, like in degrees. It might be in the next sign, but it's still the closest planet or one of the closest in degrees. Because Saturn's your misery. And you, people try to make the K2 place a safe place. But if Saturn's there, it's not a very nice, safe place. So you have no incentive to stay there and overindulge in your K2 house and your K2 life. It gives you a lot of motivation to grow and go somewhere else. So K2 Saturn people are very capable of making tremendous growth in life, spiritual and psychological growth. Um, it, they tend to be more humble people. They're okay with being in last place. They don't always need to be first. Um, unlike a K2 Sun person who has a need to be um, seen as a more important. Um, so I like K2 Saturn because it helps a person, it matures a person, it helps them grow, they make more progress on their spiritual life, they make more progress on their psychological life. And it's all because they're not stuck in a place because the K2 place is simply not good enough to be stuck. So imagine, like I look at K2 as being like a castle, a safe place, where we can make everything okay, where we can survive. So if you live in a castle that's cold, then you'll want to go into the forest more than if the castle's nice and warm and cozy, right? So Rahu it represents the forest, the jungle, that we have to go into and learn new things. So when Saturn's in the castle, K2, the castle's cold, it's not that comfortable, it's not that wonderful. So then the jungle starts looking more attractive. Okay, so it helps motivate a person to go and grow, which we do to Rahu. Rahu is really the point in our chart where all of our growth is going to occur. A lot of astrologers say, oh, Rahu is a worldly planet. Stay away from Rahu. But that's not true. We're born on a worldly planet. Why? For a reason. God didn't make us be born on a worldly planet as a cosmic joke. We're born on a worldly planet because we need a worldly experience that changes our mind about ourselves. And the thing that's gonna change our mind about ourselves is the house that Rahu is in. That's the worldly house we need to go experience in a way that it changes our mind about ourselves. Because each of us that's born here was born non-liberated, right? Born with ego consciousness and non-liberated. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been born. And each one of us has an idea about ourselves that prevents God from fully coming into our consciousness. So until we get a different idea about ourselves, God cannot come fully into our consciousness. And the only place we're going to get a different idea about ourselves is by going to Rahu. So we have to go there. It is a worldly house, but you have to go there. The only time we go there in a way that's not helpful is if we go there under the influence of drugs or alcohol, okay? But no matter what we do in our Rahu house, no matter how bad society points its fingers, no matter how much somebody can criticize what you've done with your Rahu house, 
if you went there sober and not on drugs, you're going to, it's going to be a, it's going to be worth going there for. It's what's going to help you change your mind. However, if you go there drunk, if you go there on drugs, then of course you can't change your consciousness in a healthy way. And that's the only time you want to criticize a person for their Rahu behavior. Okay. No matter what it is, no matter how crazy it seems, no matter how evil it seems, if they're going there consciously and clearly, they're going to have their minds change in a way that helps them grow, grow and grow spiritually. Unfortunately, when a Saturn Rahu conjunction happens, a person is so scared of making that growth of going into that unknown, dark, deep jungle of Rahu, to that Rahu house and that Rahu experience, that they literally do not feel that they can go there without help. So they won't go there if somebody's not holding their hand. So they'll want a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a husband, a mommy, a daddy, somebody to hold their hands, a friend, as they go through the hard times in their life, as they grow into that Rahu house. So if Rahu's in the second house, third house, whatever house, when they have to do something to do with that house that Rahu's in, they want help. They want support. They're too scared to go there alone. The problem is, with Rahu, we have to go there alone. Unless it's the seventh house or a relationship, a house that has to do with the person, you know. Like the third house is a house that has to do with your teammates. So maybe that house you have to, the lesson is to do things with teammates. But generally speaking, Rahu we have to do alone. Okay, so if we go that we can't go there without support, then we can't go there and truly get the experience we need to see ourselves differently. Okay, so the Rahu Saturn conjunction is too scared to go there without help. So they'll want help from people, or they'll want to boost their courage with drugs or alcohol. And it very much contributes to these kind of addictions, the people addictions and drug and alcohol addictions. And they just cannot let go of people or things that they think are helpful, which really aren't helpful because they don't allow for the person to grow. If somebody is always holding your hand, you don't grow. If you're on drugs, you don't grow. But these people don't feel like they can do it without it. You know, one person had a moon Rahu conjunction told me that they couldn't talk to members of the opposite sex. They had it in the seventh house that they couldn't talk to members of the opposite sex unless they were tipsy because they were so scared of the opposite sex that they wouldn't do it unless they were tipsy, a little drunk. Well, that's not going to serve them well. Eventually, they, have, they did learn to talk to members of the opposite sex sober, which was good. So with Rahu Saturn, though, it is so scary for the person to go into the Rahu house that it restricts a person's growth more than any other single factor I can think of astrologically. So hopefully they have other things helping out their chart, helping out their Rahu, helping out Saturn. Otherwise, they can just stay stuck and not make any progress in life, don't, not become happier people, not grow spiritually. More than anyone, they have to really become super brave because their fears are huge. It's really, really scary to go to the Rahu house. We would rather, most people, all of us, would rather die than go to the Rahu house. Imagine the person you know who has lived in the city their whole life. And when you say, let's go to the jungle, they say, oh no, I'll get eaten by a lion if I go to the jungle. The tiger will eat me. A lot of people feel that way. A lot of city people, like in India, they're scared to go into the jungle. They think if they go to the jungle, they'll get eaten by a tiger or bit by cobra, you know? The truth is, there's more chance of them getting ran over by a car in the city they live in than getting eaten by a tiger in the most tiger-infested jungle on earth. But the, the jungle feels so much more scary, even though it's not. That's what the Rahu house is. The Rahu house is the jungle where we have all these fears over that house, none of them which are true. But we won't know that until we go there. But because it is such a scary place to go, we don't want to go there until death, you know, because death seems like a better option usually, you know, to go fully into the Rahu house and develop that house and grow there. It's so scary. It feels like I'd rather die than go to the Rahu house. Well, when you have a Rahu Saturn conjunction, it feels like I'd rather die from weeks of agonizing torture than go to the Rahu house. That's literally how scary it can feel. So unless there's someone holding their hands, 
unless they have an addiction to help them go there, a drug that numbs them, that helps them feel different, marijuana, alcohol, other drugs. They just don't want to go to that house. And that's the house they need to go in to grow. So they really have to become brave. And over time, eventually, they'll become brave enough to do it. Eventually, they'll have to. And hopefully, by that time, they haven't done drugs, they haven't done enough alcohol and things to damage themselves. Because if they've damaged themselves by that time, then they may never be able to go to that house and not make any growth. So Rahu-Saturn conjunction reduces, makes growing into a more happy, mature, healthy person more difficult than any other position in the chart. Whereas a Saturn-K2 conjunction very much helps that process. Yes. And the other thing is Saturn and Rahu are both delaying and separating factors. So the house that Rahu and Saturn are in, it's so hard to get that house. It's so hard to get that house in a working way. It's the last house in your horoscope that you're going to get to work for you. It's the house that has Saturn and Rahu in it. Yeah, and many, one last thing I would ask you is many people are, <laughs> they've already started asking that uh, why why don't you make videos on the Saturn K2 conjunction which will happen from March? So would you like to just share yeah. for that? Yeah, well I have I just finished a course of over 70 videos on Rahu and K2. It's called Healing Rahu and K2. Some of those videos I posted on my YouTube. But in that course, I give a, a long video to every possible Rahu and K2 conjunction plus everything to do with the signs. I really suggest that for more on Saturn K2 or on any other, anything else to do with Rahu. It's the largest course ever taught on Rahu and K2 thus far. Okay. It's literally 70 hours long about right now. <laughs> Rahu and K2 are so important. You, you know, I, I really suggest people watch the free videos I have on Rahu and K2 on my YouTube to get an idea of how important these planets are. They're the only planets we have to worry about. Everything else will take care of itself. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. It's been a long time. <laughs> yeah, well, my pleasure. I'm glad we finally got to do this. I know you've been patiently waiting for me to finish up some other things so I could visit your channel. So thank you. And um, hopefully we can connect again in the future and um, do some other fun things. Yes, and lastly, I would like to say that uh, you also do readings, I guess. Now you're you know, right now, I'm too busy finishing up some classes. I'm really, really trying to finish up the last couple courses that I need to, um, to where I feel my students can do everything that I do just as well. Um, simply because the amount of people who want me to do readings, I can't do it. So they really have to go to my students and. Um, I just don't have the time. So right now I'm pretty much referring almost everyone to my students, except I have a, a client base that's been, some of these clients have been going on for 20 years now. I barely have time to manage them anymore. And even some of them I've been referring to students. So I really can't take new readings now. Um, you know, the internet world is just too big. You know, I liked it when I lived in a town and people just came. I could do everyone in that town, no problem, you know? Um, but I would have to stay up all day and all night to do everyone on the internet. And of course, I can't do that and do a good job. So I have to send people to my students right now. But my students are really good. They're doing very, very well. They've, they're take, they've taken this long Rahu K2 course. They've taken the Avashtas courses. Um, I really suggest people go there if they need a reading with these type of techniques. Yes, and I'll pin the link to your channel and your website in the description section. So whoever wants, they can go there. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. We'll get back soon again for some other okay. topic. Take Bye. care. Namaste.